Okay, guys, just to get started, FundMyHome.org started in um, 2017. It started in the state of Florida. That's where we initially began the operation. So right now, in terms of states that are open, Florida is open, and we just opened up Texas. The plan for the company is to open up all 50 states. If you've been on the overview, and I recommend that if you have potential home buyers or potential associates, make sure you put them on the overview Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific time to 6.30. We try to keep it between 30 and 35 minutes, so it's not going to take a lot of time from your potential home buyer as well as yourself as an associate. That 30-minute overview will give your potential home buyer or associate the basic understanding of what we do, who we are, and how we do it. So let me just start with one important point. Fundmyhome.org is not the 501c3. So it's fundmyhome.org in collaboration with Real Estate Mortgage Grants Down Payment and Closing Assistance, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. So I want you to have that distinction. Somebody might say they looked up the company and they don't see fundmyhome.org as a nonprofit and they're confused. You need to know or let them know that Real Estate Mortgage Grants Down Payment and Closing Costs that we work in collaboration with, that's the 501c3 nonprofit. That's where our donors actually uh, send the money to or write a contribution to. So that's number one. And remember the mission statement. The mission statement is very simple. We want to put a million families in homes over the next 30 years. That's it pretty much in a nutshell. Now, fundmyhome.org is here for the people, by the people. What does that mean? It means we want to help individuals that deserve a second chance at home ownership. So we're talking about individuals that currently cannot get a home due to low FICO scores, because you know we can help folks with 580 and, and even less with our uh, credit supplement program. There's a lot of organizations out there, and I just recently spoke to someone, and they mentioned Experian, and I've seen them on TV, that for free, if you contact Experian, and you can actually show that you've been paying your cell phone, your water bill, and your electric bill, they can also help boost your FICO scores, and they do it free. You have to go to your bank and give them some information, and then they will actually send those documents to the credit bureau, and that can boost your scores. Now, I've only heard about that in the last week. I've seen it on TV, and I thought it was a joke. I call it, uh, we have a lot of uh, individuals in the company that work with agencies that focus on helping people to increase their FICO scores, and I thought it was a joke. And a couple of them said, no, they know individuals that actually have used that, and they've increased their FICO scores. So you guys on the line, if you're starting to talk to potential home buyers, I would recommend you call up Experian, see how that works, and start right now helping your clients increase their FICO scores if they actually do it free. But, of course, we have a program, and we simply have an outside company. It's not fundmyhome.org, but if you need that help and you call our 800 number, extension 700, and you mention you want credit supplement, uh, you want to talk to someone about the credit supplement program, then they'll give you that information. So that's the thing that we do that other companies don't do. Also, if you go to a traditional lender, lenders generally will not work with someone with FICO scores below 640. They're not looking for 580. That's really, I mean, that's what a lot of people are, but that's not the market they're looking for. So we have 580, which is unusual for most. Also, the big thing we also have, and the main thing is, we offer a non-repayable grant. Now, every Monday night when we have the overview, you guys, if you've been on it, you probably heard me do the recap, St. Lawrence Bond, and I talk about what makes our program unique. And I mentioned we give up to $48,000 in a non-repayable grant, no seconds, no liens, no classrooms to attend. It's a free gift. 
There are different grants that are done by cities and states and counties, but a lot of them have attachments. You have to pay extra money. You have to attend classes. Sometimes they put a lien on your property. It's just a whole lot of red tape. We don't have any of those. So that separates us from everybody else in the marketplace. So what we do, once again, we give a non-repayable grant, and we say up to 48000 So I want you guys to be clear. Everyone doesn't get 48000 It depends on the actual cost of the property being purchased. You buy a property in Nevada for $150,000, you are not going to get $48,000. $150,000 probably you end up getting uh, probably a combination of 12000 down and maybe 10000 or 8000 for closing costs. So you'll probably get between eighteen and 20000 But you'll get enough that you can actually get into the property. On an average property of 250000 for example, and it's on your overview presentation. So when you go to your overview presentation and we use an example of a potential home buyer purchasing a property to, for 250000 we show them when they use the down payment calculator that on that property for 250000 without fundmyhome.org, they would have to come to closing with $20,000. Uh, $770, uh, yeah, $20,000, I think $20,770, but by getting the down payment and the grant from, I mean, getting the uh, grant and the closing cost from fundmyhome.org, that same client can get into that house for less than $5,000. So question A, do you want to pay $20,000 to acquire a property with down payment and closing, or do you want to come with fundmyhome.org and get that same property with just $5,000 at closing? So that's the value that, again, separates us from everything else out there. So that's the down payment assistance. We talked about the low FICO scores we accept. And the last one, which is a real game changer, is student debt. As you've seen in the video, student debt is at over $1.5 trillion. The average student owes over $40,000 and uh, delinquent and many times uh, defaulted student loans. Student loans especially are generally backed by the government, so therefore, because our loans are government-backed, you can't get, and many people cannot get a loan for that reason. With our student forgiveness program, we can reconstruct that debt. Where the debt's still there, we're not taking it off the books, but we can reconstruct it where it's favorable to the lenders, and we can help the lenders more favorably so you can qualify for a mortgage. Now, in the overview, if you have someone with student debt, it says, number one, it would cost them $590 for the outside company that works with our education department to restructure that debt. That's a real time-consuming and very detailed uh, operation. It costs time and money. So you pay $490, and then you give us a retainer for $498 because once we start the process, if you decide or the potential homeowner decides, you know what, I changed my mind, I don't want to, I don't want to com complete this, well, we spent man hours, we spent all the money, and now we're holding the bag and they walk away. So we lose money. But Carlos, just last week, if you've been on the overview, he decided, you know what, we're going to help everybody with student debt. So we, at this point, and we may do it for six months, a year, it just depends, but we are going to absorb that entire cost. So if you have a potential home buyer that that's the big issue, they don't have to worry about the 490 anymore, and they don't have to worry about the 495 retainer. That is omitted, uh, omitted at this point in time. So once again, the three big things that we do, we just mentioned, and also all you have to do is go to your website, Go under Associates, Navigate Here, and when you count down three boxes, I think it is, you'll see Business Model Overview. So you can do an overview with someone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't have to wait till Monday and Thursday when we have the scheduled overviews because right on your website, on the right side, on the home buyers, I mean over Associates, Navigate Here, there is the presentation. It's 17 minutes and 51 seconds long. It doesn't take a lot of time. So when I, have to, when I speak to someone that works at night, they can't be on the overview, I always say, you know what, 
You got about, you got a half an hour right now? Yes, I got a half an hour right now. Great. Here's my website, com. They go to my website. I tell them go all the way over to the right where it says Associates Navigate here. I say look down on that column. You see where it says Overview? Tap the button. It's 17 minutes and 51 seconds. I want you to look at that. I'm going to give you three minutes when it's over to write your questions down, and then I'm going to call you right back. So that's how you can do the overview all the time. If, for example, you wanted to do a big meeting at the uh, library, okay, right there, the library on, on uh, Flamingo, you could have rent the room if that's what you wanted to do, or any room, take your computer in, make sure that there's a screen that you can connect it to, and you can just show the presentation right there, let the presentation answer all the, let the presentation do all the talking, I should say, and then all you have to do is be available for the recap. So I'm going to take a few minutes to clarify as a grant specialist, what does that mean? And here's what it means. Number one, when they ask you any question pertaining to banking, pertaining to real estate, the answer is simply, I'm a grant, well, we're going to say everyone certified. So for the example, I'm a certified grant specialist. My company will help you, my 501c3 will help you after, after you are approved by the bank. We do nothing until the bank says yes. And I want you guys to keep in mind, this is not a first-time home buyers program. This is not a... Uh, inner city or, um, uh, how do I put it, this is not a medium income or low income special kind of program. And those programs are good, don't get me wrong. Any city, state, or county that puts a program to help individuals that normally could not experience home ownership get into a home, I encourage everyone to take advantage of it because owning a home is far greater and more advantageous than renting. But I want you to know that's not what FundMyHome.org is doing. You can come to us and be making 500000 a year. You can come to us and making 30000 or 35000 a year. It's all the same to us. The main thing that we look at is debt-to-income ratio, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But the reason I'm mentioning what I'm mentioning is this. When people start asking you questions like, well, what's the PMR? You know, these folks who are in real estate or maybe the mortgage brokers or they think they're smarter than you because, they know you work at 7-Eleven, and now you're talking about helping them to acquire a grant, and they're a little snobbish. Don't be intimidated by that because you don't need to worry about that. You're going to know your part, which is how they can qualify. All those questions will be answered once the bank approves them. So when someone starts asking me, do you do a 2013K? That's what I've done, and I want to do it. So, well, you know what? That's a banking question. I don't do banking. I can help assist you with the grant. So what you need to do, and I'll help you do it, is go right here on my website, and it's going to say, homeowners navigate here. And I'm going to tell the person, the first thing you actually need to do before we can even talk about helping you get a home is to see if the bank will qualify you. So we're kind of like, um, <clears throat> we're not loan processors. We're documentation processes, for lack of a better word. We want to know if the person we are talking to has a chance or probability factor of getting approved by the bank because the bank has the last and the final word. So we want them to look at home buyers navigate here. And then the first one says follow the process. And it will take them step by step by step, letting them know everything that they need to know so they can potentially be approved by the bank. You and I, if it's my mother, my brother, you know, my best friend, there's no wiggle room. We can't do any winking and shaking hands or anything to change what the lender is going to approve. All we can do is make sure that we give them enough documentation, the way they're requesting it, so that we can have a favorable response. So you let that person know they have to go to associates, I mean, the home buyers navigate here, and they have to do follow the process. Now, you're going to get some people say, look, uh, I just want to know if I can get the house. Okay, I don't have time for all that. Then you can say, well, you know what? This is not the program for you. 
When you have time, give me a call. You got my number. Don't waste your time. We're not begging people to give them free money. Don't ever put yourself in a position where someone is demanding from you and telling you what you have to do. You're the one that has the golden goose. You're the one that actually is going to get them potentially into a home. So they need to be respectful of your time, and they need to listen to what you have to say. And you're going to tell them, this is how we work. It's non-negotiable. We believe an educated buyer is our best buyer or an educated consumer is our best consumer. So I want you to go through this section right here on my website, Home Buyers Navigate Here. Now, in that section, they will find out if they are eliminated because it's going to tell them everything they need to know that the bank is going to require if they walked into Wells Fargo or Bank of America and said, look, I'd like to apply for a mortgage. The only difference is they don't have to get dressed up and sit in the bank's office. We're going to sit and let them sit in their home, and we're going to give them some, hopefully, a grant to make it work for them. So that part, you and I, and I keep looking at it as associates, we have to know that before we can do fundmyhome.org. So if anybody on this call is excited about the opportunity, but they have not looked at Associates Navigate here, then I can tell you that's your first step because you're going to get a lot of questions from potential home buyers. And once you know the answer, it's going to save you a lot of headache and a lot of time, and you cannot call the 501C3 people and expect them to answer those questions because they don't do any of that. We don't have a support, uh, we don't have what you call a support office number where you can call up and say, oh, fund my home that off. I got a question. Somebody's uh, looking to buy a mobile home and it's on two acres and it's got this and it's got that. Does it look like we might be able to get them a loan? They'll just hang the phone up on you. So that's, that's an uh, ignorant question in the sense that they know you haven't done your homework, and you're certainly not a certified grant specialist. It's, that's basically a dumb question. It means you haven't done anything, and we don't have time for that. So we as associates, we need to make that our first priority. So when you go through it, there's a couple of things you're going to see. You're going to see that we do, and the most important thing is, have the down payment calculated. That's your first step, guys. If we can't get them pass the down payment calculator, that means that no matter what, we can't get them approved. Now, on YouTube, we have 25 or more training. So, guys, a lot of our training is on the YouTube channel. That's how we correspond with the associates. So make sure you start going to fundmyhome.org on the YouTube channel. You'll see that there's one training that's put on by Carlos Berrettini himself and it's down payment calculator. So if we can't get past that one, which is like the second video that your potential homeowner is going to see, then, then we need to move on to the next person because we can't get it closed. So let's talk about that for a moment. When you go to the down payment calculator, you're going to see a breakdown on what's necessary and what we have to know to move forward. So it's going to say uh, there's a client file jointly, husband and wife, is it single, just the wife, just the husband? So all you have to do is fill out each section. So you need to practice with your wife, your girlfriend, your brother, just uh, anybody in the team, you guys need to make up some numbers and just try it to get comfortable with it. But I do want you to know there's a training on it that Carlos Berrettini put on, and it is on YouTube. So they'll ask you, what is the borrower's income? So let's use that for an example. So we're going to say somebody's buying a property in Vegas and it's 200000 So first thing they're going to ask you is, how much is the property that you're looking for? So you're going to see on that site a Zillow tab. And they can go to Zillow so that they know that if they're buying a property in Summerlin, they need to know the median price range of a house in Summerlin. They're buying one in Paradise, they need to know the median price of the home in paradise. If they're going to Fremont, you know, whatever area of town, they need to know if they're looking for a three-bedroom, two-bath, uh, two-car garage, if they go to Zillow and they put in that zip code, it'll show them a number of homes that have three-bedroom, two-bath in a garage 
and they'll see the median price range for that home. So if they look at five or six, let's say Paradise, and they say, okay, in Paradise, you can actually get a nice three-bedroom, two-bath uh, with a garage for 250000 So now they know that's the number that they want to apply for. That's the mortgage they're looking to get from the lender. So on that section, right at the bottom, it'll say estimate price of the property. And they put 250000 that way the calculator knows how much money we are looking to apply for. So once you have that, I think it's at the bottom at the top, now we know that we're looking for a mortgage of at least 250000 because we check the community that the client wants to live in, and we know that that community supports $250,000 home. So that's good. Now, when we go to the calculator, it will say borrower's income. We're looking for line seven. Line seven is the number that you have to put in that section. Now, you may get someone who says, well, I make 100000 a year because I work at the flea market. I do this on the side. I got my little auto business. We don't care about that. I should say we don't care. <clears throat> the bank is not interested in their extracurricular activity financially. They want to see what shows on their tax income tax return. Everyone's getting their tax returns right now. They're going to look at 2019. If that line seven says 30,000, that's the number that you're going to put in that section for borrowed income, $30,000. Even if they make 80 and they say, well, I made 100 and I spent 40,000 in business expenses so I don't have to pay the government a whole lot. I'm just writing things off. That's wonderful, <clears throat> wonderful, and that's what business people do. Nothing wrong with it. But as far as the lender, that line seven item of 30,000, that's what you put. If you're doing it with your wife and she makes $25,000, it will say uh, co-borrower, $25,000 would be the wife. So together, it's $55,000. If it's just that person, and in this example, we're going to say it's just one person, his income, we're going to say it's $30,000. Okay, so you got that there. Then it's going to ask you car payment. Whatever that monthly car payment is, you have to write that dollar amount. Then it's going to say credit card. On credit card or installment, anything they have to pay monthly, we want the minimum amount. So let's say they say I have a Visa card and it's 1200 Okay, we don't want to know how much you owe. What's the minimum you can pay? Well, I never pay the minimum. I pay 100 a month. That's fine, but that's not what I want to know. On, that, on your monthly statement, what's the minimum payment? Well, the minimum is 15 Great. That's the only amount we have to put, $15. Because we want to look at the debt versus the income. Debt to income is going to determine if we can help this person get into a property. So you put, let's say you've got three credit cards, he owes a thousand on each one, but each one only has fifteen dollars for the minimum. So fifteen on this, fifteen on this, fifteen on this, so it's forty five dollars. That's the actual monthly minimum. So that goes on installment. If the wife is with them, you do the same for her if she has a car payment and her credit card. If Someone's getting alimony, you put that down, receive an alimony, there's a question for it. If someone's paying child support and you're spending 50 a month, 100 a month child support, you put that in as well. So you fill, you fill out all the sections, and then right in the right-hand corner, you hit the button, and the calculator will figure out everything, and it will come up good or poor. So what are you looking for? You're looking for debt to income being below 56%. If the debt to income is 60%, 57, 58, even if it's one point, the lender will not move a bunch. So let's say we did the example and let's say someone's doing 30,000. So let's say we had in there, like I said, 250,000. Person was only making 30,000. We look at the bottom and what do we see? We see poor. Poor means based on this person's income, and the amount of debt that they're paying monthly, the bank is not going to approve it. So we have a couple of options. We can go and take that 250 and put 200,000 and see if it still says poor. It'll still be poor. Then we say, let's go to 150. We go to 150, still poor. Then we go to 130, I think it might be, or 128, and then all of a sudden it's going to say good. So now we can say to this client, Mr. Jones, Based on the income, unless you want to bring in a co-buyer, if he's doing it by himself, 
you're not going to be able to get a property that's more expensive than one third. Is there any area that we can look at that you'd be okay with if we could get you two bedrooms instead of three, but in the range of 130,000? He might say, well, yeah, I mean, I want to get a house. If I have to start small and work my way up, that's still okay. So now you know where you are. If he says, well, my daughter stays with me, I would, can I use her income? You certainly can. How much does she make? Well, she makes 30000 Okay, well, between you and her, now we're looking at 60000 And if we put 60000 you can get that property for 250000 You can qualify. But bear in mind, she is the co-owner as well as co-borrower. So the house now is in your name and her name. And I had someone say, well, can I give her like 10% and I own 90? I said, no, no, it doesn't work that way. If you're both there, it's split down the middle. So they said, okay, great. So those are just some of the options. But the main thing you want to look for is line seven. That's important. You got to have that there. You got to put all the debts, of course, in there. And you have to see that the property that they're looking for will fit based on their income. Now, once all that is good, now we can get to work because we're not wasting their time, we're not wasting our time, because this is a potential client. Next thing we go to is we look at their FICO score. Now, we have Credit Karma there because it's free. We recommend it because when you hit Credit Karma, it doesn't lower your FICO score. If you do outside agencies for your FICOs, you can actually give your FICOs a knock because you can lose a couple of points just checking around. So if you go to Credit Karma and let's say it shows 620, 640, great. You know you're okay. Then we have zero down and VA. If someone's holding a veteran certificate, that means they can actually get a VA property with zero down. Now, any realtor that markets a VA property it's always zero down because the government takes care of the down payment. So we don't have anything unique for veterans in that respect. But the flip side is when you get a VA property, yes, your certificate allows you to get zero down, but the closing cost on a VA property is higher than the normal cost if you want FHA, Fannie Mae, or Freddie Mac. So what does that mean in English? It means if you get a VA property, it may say fifteen thousand dollars down is what you. I mean, you need fifteen thousand down. Did the government take care of that? But then the closing cost could be twenty thousand. That's the big de the deal breaker. So when you go VA, we can tell that client there's zero down payment because the VA is going to pick up that and zero closing cost, so they can get in for no money at all because we'll pay that eighteen thousand. That's what no one else would do. So that's why we can get a VA person in with zero down. Now, when you look at VA, and I'm just going to tell you, it's on your site, and you'll see VA and USDA, that's the United States Department of Agriculture, the FICO debt, the debt to income ratio is different. Traditionally, it's 56% when you use our normal program. If they go with the zero down, which is a better deal for them because it's costing them nothing, their FICO scores have to be between 41 and 45 they can't have 56% that debt is too high. So I'm just giving you information that's right there on their site. I just want you to kind of know when you're looking at it, you have a little understanding of what all that means. And there's a training that I did. I've got several trainings on YouTube where I did the whole thing with examples. So you don't have to look through Lawrence Bond and look for down payment training, et cetera, but they're on your YouTube. And the one that Carlos does is detailed. So we got past that. The next thing is, we want to make sure, and this is really key, supportive documentation. So it shows they have to have a Social Security card. It shows that they have to, they cannot have had a bankruptcy in the last three years. They cannot have had a foreclosure in the last three years. The bank is not going to take it. It's going to show that they have to be on their job three years. And if they say, well, you know, I worked for um, Red Lobster for two years, and then I left and I'm working at Olive Garden, I've been at Olive Garden for one year. Because those are the same type occupation, they will count that as three years on the job. Now, if they worked for uh, Albertson for two years, 
and now they work at um, Olive Garden for one year, they don't have three years of continued similar occupation, and the lender is not going to take a look at that unless they had like cycle scores of like 590. That would be an exception because it's two different two different job descriptions, and maybe the Olive Garden wouldn't work out. When they see you in the same job for three years, it shows that you have stability. They're more comfortable giving you, uh, you know, uh, giving you a loan because you, you've been there, and after three years, you obviously know the job pretty well. So I'm trying to get you guys to understand. It's not fundmyhome.org that's going to deny the clients you bring to the table. It's the lender. We know what the lender is asking for. That's why it's important that you have to do the home buyers navigate here because we know what they will accept and what they won't accept. Okay, so there we got, so that's all in there. You guys can look at that yourself. The other one that's also important is frequently asked questions. You have to take a look at that because there's certain things that people will always ask and you need to know the answers so you sound somewhat knowledgeable when you're talking to them. Now, I had a lady in Texas, and she was telling about a property she wanted to get, and she said it had 30, 40 trees, had a, like, stream going through the center of it, beautiful two acres, and I said, wow, that sounds great. And I said, okay, that sounds good. How much is the property? And she said the property was 125000 which was good because, guys, this is also one of the frequently asked questions. In a lot of parts of the country, you can buy a nice house for 100000 110 You might even find some in Vegas. We can't do property for under 120000 The banks will not do a loan for less than one twenty. It's two more uh, – it's more cumbersome, and they don't make the same kind of profit, so they don't even want to look at it. So your minimum point point uh, point price point is 120,000. Have to be above 120,000. But getting back to the example of the lady in Texas, I said, okay, now what kind of property? She said, oh, it's got a mobile home on it. I said, okay, we do mobile homes, we do modulars, we do condos. Great. Is it a double wide or a single wide? She said it's a single wide, but it's extra spacious. We don't do single wide has to be double. It has to be a double wide. So we couldn't do the deal. And again, it's not fun my home that off. It's what the lenders require. So this is why you have to know those frequently asked questions. Joe's a foreign nationalist. He's been here so many years. Can we help him out? Yes. Johnny doesn't have a social security number. He's got a green card. Can we help him out? No. Bill just got an inheritance of a hundred thousand from his dad. He's only been working one year, but he can put a big down payment in. Can we help him out? No can't help them out. So all those things are listed under frequently asked questions. And then the last piece, once we submit a potential package to the bank, we have to make sure that those potential clients during that entire process until they get a letter saying they've been approved, that they don't make any purchases to take the debt to income ratio out of bounds. Because we've had someone get a house and get excited, buy a new car, and the clothes didn't go through because the new car took the payment to an additional 450, took them from 55 to 59, and couldn't get the loan. So there's a little section where you educate your potential home buyer. Don't buy, especially this Christmas time. I had to say that to some folks. Don't go but wild Christmas time spending money. I know it's holiday season, but if you're actually in the processing of getting a home, get the slip from the bank, then you're approved. Then you can do it because during that time when they look at your numbers, if you overspent and your credit cards are out of balance, your debt to income is going to be too high and you're not going to be approved. So this is little stuff that you got to remind people. All right, so that's the reason that Home Buy Navigate Here section is so, so important that you instruct your folks in that area. Now, the last part is the 501c3. We have the eight, you know, the 188. 1-800 number, fundmyhome.org, extension 700. Now, that number is only to be used, or that, that number primarily is the onboarding call. And you have the onboarding video in Home Buyers Navigate here. When you call that call up, you are to stick with the script that's in that video. Because they're trained on one thing only. We use, it used to take an hour for us to go through the qualifications. We got it down to 18 minutes because we're not going to entertain anything other than, hi, Ms. Jones, it's a wonderful day at fundmyhome.org. 
Uh, my name is Lawrence Bond, and who do we have on the line? Oh, we have Manny on the line. Hi, Manny. How are you today? Oh, I'm great. Manny, what is your ID number? Manny gives his ID number. Okay, great. And who is your customer? Oh, my customer is Maria. Hi, Maria. And what is your customer ID number? Maria has one. She gives it to him. And then they're going to say, well, great. So, Maria, where would you like to buy your home? What date would you like to move into your home? I have your profile. I want to get a profile. Tell me, Maria, what are you looking for? Oh, you want to be near public transportation. Okay. Oh, you have small children. You want to be near elementary school. Great. All right. And how many bedrooms would you like? So they're going to ask her the type of home, the property she wants, and they're going to create a profile. So now when we get down the road, the, the realtors know what kind of house to look for, what Maria needs, and that's what they go to work on making sure that's done. And then the last thing they're going to do, most important, they're going to check the numbers that we came up with on the calculator. Because the only reason we have, we're doing the onboarding call is, according to our numbers, this person qualifies, Maria qualifies for a home. So they're going to say, Maria, line seven, they're going to go through the numbers, make sure it's accurate, and then they're going to say, the good news is you qualified. Now I want you to do the last step is take all the documentation that you see, supportive documentation. I want you to go on the bottom of Manny's website, and I want you to hit the uploader button and upload all your documentation. That will go straight to the bank. The bank will contact you in 7 to 10 days and let you know what they can do for you. And any questions about PMI and 30 months, I mean, 20-year mortgage, accelerated mortgage, homeowner's insurance, that's between you and the lender. I'm not a lender. I'm a certified grant specialist. I just put all the documentation together to make sure that you would indeed have a good chance of being approved. Now, if you're talking to the 501c3 and it's poor, but it's just off a hair, sometimes they'll say, you know what, this looks good. You've got that car payment of $1,300, and that's just not too off. So we're going to pay that off for you. If you go, you know, we continue the process and everything goes through, in addition to giving you down payment and closing, we're going to pay the 1500 or the even 1800 to pay your car note off because that's going to allow you to qualify. So we do everything we can to do what we say we do, which is to get that person in a home with the least amount of out-of-pocket expense. We might also mention, well, you're going to need $7,200 at closing. Does that work for you in your budget? And they say, you know what, uh, I, I mean, everything is good, but I, I'll be honest, I don't have $7,000. You have $6,000. Uh, uh, you know, I don't even have $6,000. Okay, I hope you know it's going to take, you knew that this wasn't a 100% loan, I mean, grant, uh, down payment closing. No, I knew it would be something. I just figured I'd go through it because I don't know the numbers. And, okay. How about four thousand? Well, maybe I could I could probably scrape up four, maybe five, possibly. All right, let's look at this. We have USDA property. That's the United States Department of Agriculture. Ninety percent of the country is USDA. We're going to look now in Nevada, Vegas here, and see where there's a USDA property. Uh, in North Las Vegas, so and so and so and so, and where two fifteen meets so and so, that area is USDA. Would you be willing to move from Fremont Street to North Las Vegas and we can get you in with, with no money down? Uh, yeah, I sure would. I'm ready to go now. So they want to do whatever we can to see if we can get that person in once they're looking at the documentation. And USDA is all on the Home Buyers Navigate here. I'm not going to take the time to show you. Take your time and go through that. It will show you how to use that. And it's also on a, uh, I did a couple of trainings on YouTube on that. You'll see that up there as well. So I just want you to get the idea is when you call a 501c3, you guys, meaning us, we should give them a tight package where they can just get the profile for the client, tell them, yes, we can move forward, or B, is an option. And let's say in this example, Maria is good. They'll say, now, Maria, upload your documentation. Seven to ten days, she'll get a call from the bank. And then all those questions about PMI and all that, she can address that to the lender, and they can negotiate from there. So that's what I want to say on that end. Now, question that I know a lot of folks ask, 
what does it take to open up Nevada? As you've noticed, you've seen the TV commercial, and our goal objective has been, and it's been a while now, so I'm hopefully getting closer and closer, is to open up all 50 states. This is going to this, this program, because we do have rentals in place and lenders all over the country, and we're looking to roll it out. We just opened up Texas, you guys probably know, the 1st of uh, February. Um, initially, and it still stands, and I was going to talk to Carlos this weekend on a get clarification where we are and get a list. Any state that we can get 22, 20, sorry, 20 or more pre-submissions. Now, what is a pre-submission? That's when you talk to your client, you do all the work, everything that you would normally do. They have, they, not you, they have a folder in their home because we can't see their legal documentation. So I want to make sure you guys are clear. You don't ask anybody's social security number. You don't ask anybody any of their private material. You're not licensed to do that. I don't care if it's your mom or your best friend. You don't want to go to jail. That's only for a licensed realtor or a uh, mortgage broker. That's not what we do. So they themselves will put those supportive documentations together. They will keep them together. They will have them ready. And then what you will do is simply tell them, you know, you'll, you'll issue them a number. So right at the bottom, the moment you get the customer, it'll say customer ID number. So you get a customer ID number so that that customer is under you. So whenever it's processed, that's your customer. No one else can talk to them and say, I'm with fundmyhome.org. I'm interested because you've got their name and it's in the system. But you're going to keep, you're going to have them keep their documents in place. Once we hit 20, I think we got nine, eight or nine as we stand. I haven't checked lately. But once we have 20, then you'll hear an announcement, just like we did with Texas. Okay, call all of your potential homeowners and tell them that they can now upload all their documentation. So on that same day, that same week, 2025, I think, in fact, when we hit Texas, 50 went out that same week. So that lets our realtors and uh, lenders know that now we're opening up the state, so we're going to keep them busy. So right now, if you're getting folks, you know, your brother, your sister, you get all the documentation exactly the same way you would if you were going to send it to the bank or upload it to the lender, but you don't do that last step. You hold on to it, and then once we open the state, we'll say, okay, we're opening Nevada. That's when you'll make the 501c3 appointment with our 501c3 counselor, and then they'll go through everything and say, yes, this looks good. And then you're going to upload it directly on the portal, which is on the back of the on the bottom of the website on Home Buyers Navigate here, and the state will be open. So I know you guys want to open up Nevada. We're going to open up New York. We've got a whole lot of states that we've been working for. That's why you see the TV commercial that uh, we will eventually roll out. We'll we'll have an 800 number, and people can see it 24/7. And in order to participate in the commercials, I'll say that now you have to show that you have the ability to, to actually answer questions and, and, of course, do the business. So you have to have four personal associates. So when we do the commercials, if you have four personal associates, then you can participate in that end. But we're not going to wait for the commercials. We're taking proactive action right now in certain states, and we're hoping to have a few more open up real soon because we're close to 20 submissions in quite a few states. So just so you know, for Nevada, Yes, you can start taking pre-submissions. As I said, go through everything. And Manny's a leader. He's a trainer. He can help you with uh, any questions you have. Ardell, also, who you guys are part of her group, she can give you the details. I just want to give you an up overview so you kind of know what's going on. So let's take about one more section, then we'll ask questions. The payout. The reason this program is so unique is this. When you bring a potential home buyer to close, which is great, you get $750 in marketing, and that's wonderful. But just like J. Paul Getty said, I'd rather get 100%, I'd rather get 1% of 100 people than 100% of my own effort. So what does that translate to? He was talking about leverage. The way to become really successful is leverage. Leverage simply means while you're sleeping and relaxing, you have five or six folks out there that are actually working hard for themselves, not particularly for you because it's not about you. They don't even know you. They're working for themselves, but because they're part of your team, you will be compensated. That's leverage. 
And that's what this company offers uh, like nothing I've seen before. Some of you guys might have been in network marketing. I've done probably 25 over the last so many years for different reasons, not always to make money. I like the products that a lot of them had that were cost effective, but I've done some that I've done financially well with. And the marketing of this company is it's not an MLM, so don't look at it like an MLM. Don't put your mother and your sister on your front line and all that crazy stuff because it doesn't compensate you here. This is, uh, we use a hybrid, so to speak, in the sense that you're in business for yourself but not by yourself. But what makes us really unique is three things. Number one, we, are, we do pay, as you know, marketing fees from first level down to the eighth level. Now, I've, I've been with companies that will say, well, we pay to infinity. And they do, but they pay a quarter of a percent, you know, a half a percent, a one percent. In terms of dollars, it doesn't translate to much money. On our lowest level, which is our eighth, you get $50 when someone on your team does that deal. So that's not bad, as opposed to one of these companies where it's infinity, and you look at how much money you're getting on those low levels, $2, it's $3, and 10 cents, it's $4. There's not a lot of money to get excited about. So top level, first level, just so you know, you can write it down. You get $750 when you bring a deal to close. Anyone that you've enrolled, when they bring a deal to close, you get $500. Anyone they enroll is $450. So it's $500 on your first, $450 on your second, $400 on the third, $350 on the fourth, $300 on the fifth, $250 on the sixth, $150 on the seventh, and $50 on the eighth. So, and I'll say it again, personal, $750. Override, first level, $500. Second level, $450. Third level, $400. Fourth level, $350. Fifth level, 300. Sixth level, 250. Seventh level, 150. And eighth level, $50. Now, what makes this unique? What makes it unique with FundMahome.org is you can enroll five across, 10 across, 20 across. There is no limit to how wide you can go. Now, I was with a previous company, and I can only enroll five across the front, and then when I got a superstar I've been trying to get for a year, I couldn't put him across the front at the top, which would benefit me more. I had to put him on the second. And if my second was filled, I'd have to put him on the third. So you can end up having one of your best people way down on your fifth level or your sixth level where you don't get much compensation. So they do a bang-up job, you're working and training them, but because they're so far down, it doesn't really benefit. That never happens here. Everybody, you put right across your front level. Okay, so that is incredible in itself. That's unbelievable, but that's what we do. Also, once you get going and you start to build a big team, you're going to have 20 people easily on your third level. And you don't know who these folks are. And all 20, every time they do a deal, it's $400 in their pocket. When you get down to, I think, on my age level, Sony, in fact, I was looking at my wife, and I said, oh, gee, we had eight people enrolled this today, and they're all on my age level. She said, yeah, they're all on your age level, and it's eight of them. And she said, yeah, and you made $50 on each one, $400. Do you know any of them? Can you even pronounce their names? I said, well, I can pronounce a couple of their names. He said, yeah, but you didn't do anything for the money. Do you get that? Then I said, oh, you're right. I don't even know who these folks are. They're in different cities and states. I don't know them from Adam. They don't know me from Adam. But that's because of the growth of the team. So, guys, you will, if you work this, you will have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. You'll have 1,000 people all over the country in a relatively short period of time on your team. And the good news is, they probably hopefully like you, but they're not there for you or me. They're doing it for themselves and their family. They're looking to get that 750 or that 500. But once they collect their 750 or 500, you're still going to pick up 150, 250, 300, 350. 
you're going to do really, really well because of the pay structure. And something that was just changed uh, last week, I, I've been talking to Carlos about it, and I have to say Carlos Veratini is very flexible. Uh, he listens. And I said, you know, right now we have two requirements to get paid with FundMyHome.org. One is once you get into a property that you put it in social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you use, to let people know that through FundMyHome.org, you were able to acquire property with a down payment and closing assistance with a free grant. And the second one is you do one deal a year that shows that you're not enrolling people and sitting back and counting your big checks based on the efforts of others. We want everyone to at least actively get out there and work. So we have a ruling one deal a year. So what we've been thinking about is because we were hoping to have had the states open up a little sooner. So Carlos said, you know what? I think we're going to do this. We're going to take that for the moment, and we're not going to we're not going to make that a requirement until all 50 states are open. You don't have to do one deal a year, but if somebody in your team does, you're going to still get paid as if you did a deal. So what does that mean? It means if you have someone right now who's in Texas or Florida, since we're opening those two areas, and they do let's say three deals. Under the old plan, if you didn't do your one deal, you wouldn't get an override on those three because they did their deal, but you didn't qualify by doing one deal yourself. The way it is now in Nevada, using that for an example, or California, uh, also Atlanta, Georgia, and New York, doesn't matter. If anybody in your eight levels does a deal, you're going to get paid. You're getting paid. And that's a big game changer. That took a lot of pressure off folks who've been around for almost a year that Again, because their state wasn't open, they really didn't bring any home buyers to close. And that was just unfortunately how it is. Well, Carlos looked at that and said, you know, that's, that's, that's not fair. We, we were hoping to open up sooner, so everybody gets grandfathered in. Now, once all 50 states open up, then, yes, you do need to do your one deal a year. So that was a real blessing. And, again, it just showed me and hopefully showed you guys the type of CEO that we have when we say the company's for the people, by the people, I mean, it's really not a typical network marketing company. That's why we don't have any HEC cards where, you, uh, where they're going to take money out of your check or uh, debit your card every month. Everything we do is basically payroll deduction. The only one that you do actually pay is your $49 membership, which gives you the doodle, which is one of our best marketing tools, I think, that the company has. So when you enroll somebody, please let them know that their site will open up immediately, two minutes later. But they need to do two things, use Cash App or Money Order, and they need to get that to uh, FundMyHome.org because after five days, the computer automatically will just delete it. It won't even be the company. It's just an internal uh, mechanism that we have that will just shut it down. And you don't want that to be the experience that you have. Guys, get on the calls Monday through Thursday with your guests. Let us do the work. And uh, I thank you for your time, and have a great day.